Hello viewers, we talked about the management of the fibroids, but now I am talking in detail about which modality to use in which patient. Starting with myomectomy, as I talked about it earlier, myomectomy means removal of the myoma or the fibroid from the uterus and leaving a functional uterus inside the body of your patient. Myomectomy is the enucleation. Why do we use the word enucleation? Because it, the fibroid has got a pseudo capsule. So, enucleate means to taking out a thing out of its nucleus or of its cover. So, enucleation of myometa from the uterus and leaving behind a potentially functioning organ capable of future reproduction. This is very important. If you take out a big fibroid and leave behind no endometrium or no functioning organ, then what is the use of leaving behind that organ? So, you remove the myoma, but the organ left behind should be functioning and if the patient is desirous of further pregnancy, she may be able to conceive. Indications of myomectomy. Why do we go for myomectomy and not hysterectomy? Because we know that if we are going for a myomectomy, there are chances of recurrence like some other fibroid may also form in that uterus. So, in which patients we select the option of myomectomy? Persistent uterine bleeding despite of medical therapy. You have tried all the medical therapies, your patient is young, she wants kids, so remove the fibroid. Excessive pain or pressure symptoms. Bleeding is not the problem, but the fibroid is for example, a subserous fibroid. It is not causing a bleeding problem, but because of the heaviness, the pain is too much. It is impinging on the bladder or the rectum. Patient is having problems with the urinary things, with the uh, this constipation or something. So, you go for removal of the fibroid and leave the uterus inside. Size was more than 12 weeks. As we know, the 12 weeks is the cutoff for deciding and the woman is desirous to have a baby. So, we will remove the myoma. Distortion of the uterine cavity without any other obvious causes. Recurrent pregnancy loss due to a fibroid. Rapidly growing myomas during follow-up and a sub-serous pedunculated fibroid. The indications are more or less the same as we talked about in the surgery. So, any subserous pedunculated fibroid, we need to remove it anyhow before it goes torsion or another secondary changes. But if the size is more than 12 weeks, there is recurrent pregnancy loss or during your follow up, you find that oh my god, every 6 months the uterus is, the fibroid is increasing in size. Remove that before it creates any further problems. Now, what are the considerations prior to myomectomy? When to decide that yes, this patient is a right candidate, what to explain to the patient? We preserve the reproductive function of the uterus. If the patient was not able to conceive earlier because of the fibroid, we remove it to make a normal uterine cavity and now the patient may conceive. To preserve the menstrual function is in a parous woman should be judicially compliant with. What does that mean? A parous woman, the family is complete, still she wants that, she wants to preserve her menstrual function. Then very judicially, very trickily you have to tell her that these are the advantages, these are the disadvantages. If I remove the fibroid, you will have continuous normal menstrual function, but this may recur or in some cases the heavy bleeding may continue even after removing the fibroid. Myomectomy is a more risky operation as compared to hysterectomy and the fibroid is too big and too many. If the uterus is having big fibroids, so if you remove this fibroid, then there is a whole cavity left, right? Or if there are too many fibroids and you go on removing each one, then what are you left with after that? So, as a surgeon, as a doctor, you should think that whether this surgery is risky or hysterectomy. Hysterectomy is generally taking out all of the things, so leaving no cavity behind. But this is a more risky operation, the blood loss is more because you are enucleating this whole thing and you have to obliterate this cavity completely after the surgery for good results. Risk of recurrence and persistent of fibroid is in 30 to 50 percent. 
if you remove this fibroid there see as we studied in our fibroid there is some changes from the genetic level so a monoclonal tumor is formed from a single myocyte so the genes are still there if you are removing one fibroid in a in a time duration of a few years the patient may have an, one another fibroid so in 30 to 50 percent of the cases the fibroid may recur so generally myomectomies are done to preserve the reproductive function but if a paris woman wants to preserve the menstrual function and does not want to go for a hysterectomy then we will have to tell that it is a bit risky operation as compared to hysterectomy and there are chances of recurrence and persistence risk of persistent of menorrhagia heavy bleeding is about 1 to 5 percent even after removal of the fibroid there may be some coexisting pathology what we have not seen what we are we uh, like for the endometrium for example the bleeding is more if you remove the fibroid also there can be chances that in front 1 to 5 percent the patient is not relieved risk of relaparotomy what does that mean as I told you, if you remove the fibroid and somehow this cavity is not completely obliterated after your surgery, if there is secondary bleeding inside the cavity or from any other site, you may have to redo the surgery in emergency condition to save the life of the patient. So, the risk of relaparotomy is 20 to 25 percent. Pregnancy rate following myomectomy is around 40 to 60 percent. It all depends on your patient selection. If you remove a sub serous fibroid and then you think that the patient will become pregnant, it is not practical because in pathophysiology we we have seen that the fibroids which are impinging on the endometrial cavity or are doing some corneal block to the fallopian tubes, only in they, those cases the infertility will give <coughs> will be decreased and the patient will conceive after the surgery of myomectomy so pregnancy rate following myomectomy is about 40 to 60 percent depending on your patient selection pregnancy following myomectomy should have a mandatory hospital delivery because the uterus becomes scarred there is there we have taken stitches on the uterine wall on the myometrium so how it will take the labor pains that Will, the time will decide. So, hospital delivery is mandatory although the chance of scar rupture is rare, but there are chances of scar rupture during labor pains. What are the contraindications of myomectomy? That even if the patient is a candidate for myomectomy, we do not go for myomectomy in cases of infected fibroid. It was a submucous fibroid after some abortion or some delivery, it has already become infected, then we do not go for a myomectomy because we leave the infection inside even after removing the myoma and the problem is still there. The patient may end up into sepsis. If there is a growth of myoma, after menopause in indications we read that there was growth in myoma but it was not after menopause in young patients also due to some secondary changes some degenerations it may increase in size but after menopause if the growth is there then we most of the time it is a sarcomatous change for that cases we are not going for such conservative surgeries we will have to remove the uterus suspected malignant change or sarcomatous change what i was talking about and for Paris women where childbearing is not an issue now, then hysterectomy is safer and a definitive treatment because now there is no chance of recurrence as we have removed all the myometrium. So, these are the four contraindications where we will try and convince the patient that myomectomy is not a better option for you. Approaches of myomectomy. How we can perform a myomectomy? either by laparotomy, opening the abdomen, opening the peritoneal cavity, going to the uterus, taking that fibroid out and stitching it back. Laparoscopy, laparoscopy means putting a laparoscope, fibro optic laparoscope inside the abdomen like it is the abdomen, symphysis pubis, epigastric umbilicus. We make ports, small small incisions and put the camera inside from this port and the secondary port small instruments go inside. We manipulate the uterus <coughs> and then the fibroid is taken out. Hysteroscopy, if there is some submucous myoma, 
then it's better to grow from a hysteroscopic approach rather from a laparoscopic approach and then we remove so depending on the patient and the location and the fibroid mapping we decide that whether to go for a laparotomy laparoscopy hysteroscopy or a robotic thing robotic is just like laparoscopy but it, they are performed by robots which are being operated by the surgeon now vaginal myomectomy what does that mean if a submucous pedunculated myoma is there this was the myoma which is coming out from this place so if you are able to see you can just twist it off and perform a polypectomy or if it is a big thing and it is stuck over here you can go for morselation what do we understand by morselation morselation means cutting a tumor in small 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 pieces and then taking it out instead of taking a whole thing all together just cut it for example in laparoscopic approach also you have removed the fibroid from the uterus now you want to take it out from the abdominal cavity how will you do that because you have made 1 1 cm incisions on the abdomen so there is an instrument morselator it morselates the thing inside and then you take it out these are exam questions basically to go on a myomectomy viva the examiner generally ask you about the instruments there are instruments on the table and they will ask you to pick that instrument and tell you everything about the surgery so there are two instruments for open or laparotomy wala myomectomy which you will find on the table this is a screw bonnes myomectomy screw what is the use of this screw if you look at this just take it out you hold it from this handle this is a screw you screw it up inside the fibroid because fibroid is a round structure just like a ball it is difficult to hold it how will you hold it to remove it out to remove something out you need to put a traction on that thing right so this is an excellent traction device you screw it inside the fibroid and then give traction and then take it out from the fibroid the from the uterus and then stitch your uterus back this is bonnes myomectomy screw and then there is bonnes myomectomy clamp what is the use of this you generally hold the uterus with this clamp like this it reduces the blood supply from the uterine arteries because we know that the uterine arteries are running like this so we clamp it for a while the blood supply to the fibroid reduces so when you are removing that thing out the total amount of blood loss decreases so in your exam if your viva is going on myomectomy you should know what are the indications contraindications and before putting your things in front of the examiner you should be able to recognize these instruments and how they are used thank you that's all for today's myomectomy